All right, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back to Football Therapy with me, your host, Jan. I hope you lot are doing well, and welcome to the match review of Chelsea's 2-2 draw away against Leicester. And to be honest, man, this kind of shows where both teams are at the moment. Chelsea wasted loads of chances in the first half. Leicester did the same in the second half. Both, I mean, you could say Leicester was more sitters in the second half, but Chelsea had so many chances to be like 3 nil, 3 one up in the first half. It was a mental game. It was an entertaining game for all the right and probably wrong reasons. There was a shock lineup. There was just a couple of peculiar moments and we're going to get into all of that today but before we do make sure you do subscribe to football therapy if you've not yet subscribed hit the bell notifications icon like the video and want to follow me on instagram as well you've probably seen the widget come up on the screen all right premier league early kickoff 12 30 saturday against leicester was one all in the first about to say the first leg the reverse fixture at stamford bridge and to be honest it all pretty much fits the narrative um Goal scorers, Rudiger, Rudiger for Chelsea, and both assists were from Mason Mount, and for Leicester, it was Barnes and Chilwell. Chilwell, the guy apparently who we want to buy, who actually had some really bad defensive moments. So I'm going to pull up the who scored graphic over my face while I take you over the shock lineup, and so you can look at some of the statistics. Whoosh, there it is. Right, so Frank Lampard did play a 4 3 Free, but it was a little bit different to what we expected. Willy Caballero starts in goal, which was probably the right thing to do. Take Kepper out of the fiery line. Also, a sort of element of not necessarily disciplinary action, but you know, he needed to probably be dropped. Uh, back line of Rudiger, Christensen, Azpilicueta, and Reese James. No real shock there. Would have been nice to see Tomori again. Midfield consisted of Jorginho, N'Golo Kante, and Mason Mount. A bit of a shock there that Kovacic didn't start, but maybe he, he was going to be used as a weapon off the bench. Obviously played last time out against Hull. And the front three consisted of Tammy Abraham, no shock. Hudson Adoy, no shock. But Pedro over William G. All right, let's get rid of the stats. So in the first half, it was, to be honest, this was just a really entertaining game in both halves. Now, I looked at the lineup and I was like, okay, I dig it. Kepa dropped for Caballero. See how that goes. I understand why. Pedro, I don't, I, at first I was like, is Frank making a statement to the Chelsea board here because he didn't get any signings? But I thought, no, he absolutely would want to win. It wasn't like that sort of petulant um, Antonio Conte second season when he did like protests via lineups, which was just weird. Pedro did run around a lot. He did okay. And to be honest, I would have liked to see Kovacic start over Mount, but it turns out in the end, although Mount was frustrating in terms of not finishing chances, and we will go through player performances in a minute, I get... I mean, he, he made both the goals, Mason Mount, so, you know, can't really argue with that. Maybe they had a plan about set pieces. The set piece plan was executed. But like I said, Chelsea in the first half played some really, really good and entertaining football that I really enjoyed. But there was just, just to be honest, like, it, it does seem, it's, this, it's a microcosm of the season again. Just not finishing chances, loads of lovely shapes. And in a way, like... I want to criticise the players, and I don't want to criticise the players, because a couple of moments when Tammy Abraham, he didn't take his chance, but then a couple of moments the pass was just behind him. So it was kind of like a mix of both, a mix of the finishes problem, and then a mix of the person who's playing the key pass to him, or, you know, that kind of thing. So it was just a frustrating collective problem that Chelsea has, and, you know, they, they remain to have now. In the first half, Johnny Evans was excellent for Leicester and Rudiger and uh, Christensen were really good for Chelsea. But by half time, I maintain that Chelsea should have scored two or three goals. Leicester probably should have had one. Um, I know Caballero made what was a very good save. And, and at that point, you're thinking, yeah, Caballero, Chelsea's number one. Good, you know, it's good. But obviously, he made a big mistake later. So yeah, half time, I think probably it should have been 3-1 Chelsea. There should have been goals, but it was a really entertaining half. So start of the second half, Chelsea do open the scoring and it's that combination of Mason Mount to Antonio Rudiger. Scenes, lovely, perfect time to score. Um, or is it the perfect time? I mean, the perfect time to score is probably at the end of a half. But you know what I mean? A good time to score really set the tone for the second half. But it only took about just under 10 minutes for Leicester to equalise via Tielemans to Barnes. I mean, good goal, really. Maybe poor from Chelsea defensively. But they actually take the lead in another 10 minutes with Chilwell. And this is... <laughs> this is... 
the Willie Caballero moment. He, I've always said this, I said this on Twitter the last couple of years, he runs out, he runs like, out like a madman. He's always done this. He's a great shot stopper, Willie Caballero, on his day, and he's superb at saving penalties. But he runs out, he chases the ball, and then he has to charge back to his goal. Chilwell's advancing, and he hits the ball in. And even though it kind of looked like Caballero made it back, he wasn't settled between the sticks, and therefore concedes the, the goal to make it 2-1 to Leicester. Now, that was poor from him. I don't want to hate on him too much because he did make a good save. And really, it's, again, the case of Chelsea just not scoring all their chances. They should have scored goals. But, meh. But a matter of minutes later, Chelsea win a free kick. And it's that combination again. Mason Mount onto the head of Rudiger. And i got to say, this is a banging header. An absolutely lovely goal from the big German. So, 2-2. Two -two on the night at this point and still best part of like what 20 minutes to play you just sensed there would be a winner and to be honest from there on Leicester got loads of pretty golden chances Johnny Evans rose up on a set piece and he was free as a bird free as a bird should have absolutely put them ahead again head is wide and similarly Jamie Vardy is running down the flank with the ball plays in Harvey Barnes who literally just drags it wide it's an easy goal to score uh, Chelsea are let off again in the second half but to be honest I don't want to say like Chelsea were massively lucky because Chelsea made their own lives really really difficult by not scoring at least at least two goals or just one goal in the first half they really should convert some of these chances there is a sort of collective psychological failing here for my money so let's talk about player performances then Willie Caballero made a good save probably settled the back line early doors but then made that mistake um, what do you say, man? Do you know what I mean? Like, it's just middle of the road. Like, it would be good just to have, like, a really good, solid goalkeeper. He's just very much a number two, Caballero. Um, I understand why Frank Lampard put him in for both strategy and statement, but pff, I can't even... I don't even want to comment on his performance because I don't know if it's good or bad. Probably not great. Rich James at right back looks absolutely beast. Faded a little bit, as did Callum hudson Adoy. Certainly both in the first half, they demonstrated immense ability. hudson Adoy had a few moments when he's taken on men. It's, I'll get to hudson Adoy in a minute. But Rich James, really, really good. Good defensively, good offensively. Faded a little bit. As for Laqueta, as I've been saying, still missed to consistent at left back 7 out of 10 or 6.5 to 7.5 out of 10 every single game gets forward a lot more now makes runs doesn't seem to give up ever he's the captain but you know what I mean so generally really really good both centre backs were decent today I don't want to put the goals down to them that Chelsea conceded Rudiger obviously winning the point single-handedly for Chelsea gets a massive shout out probably was man of the match because of that Jorginho very very good um, he actually bailed out Kante who wasn't so great in this game he gets he gets in the right positions and I think that's why Lampard and Sari likes playing him advanced because he gets in the right positions and does the right thing but his touch is too heavy concedes possession too much there was a moment but I go back to Jorginho where he can see the possession. Jorginho does like a Maradona role or around the world or whatever you call of it to basically play out of the press and it was an excellent piece of skill. Shout out Jorginho. Um, he obviously got a yellow card and then therefore he was the midfielder that was sacrificed for Mason Mount later on. Is that Kante? Had decent moments, showed you that he is integrated in the at, um, tactics and gets in the right place, but he is disappointing me, Kante. I don't know if he's tired or if his confidence has dropped, hence the touch is being poor, but he, he, you know, he needs to shake his self down a little bit and regain that touch that he had on the Sari. Mason Mount, very frustrating in the first half for me. Um, I would have been fine with him being dropped in this game. Um, but he, again, he gets in the positions but just wastes his chances, just doesn't finish off moves and score the goals. Like him and Tammy were both guilty of that today. But then again, he made both Chelsea's goals, so he has to, he's fine. He's incredibly functional in terms of how Chelsea got their result. So, fine for Mason Mount, good I guess. Pedro, a little bit better than what he had been recently. I mean, he was either gonna be brilliant or he's gonna be meh or awful. <laughs> Just pretty much every option you can have. He was pretty meh, but you know what I mean? I had, an, I had a feeling that he was going to be either really good or really bad. Turns out he was kind of middle of the road. And then it was no shock that he was the one uh, substituted for Willian. Tammy Abraham, very, very disappointing for me. Uh, I, again, he, again, getting in the right places, knowing what the moves are, being in the right place at the right time. Again, missing his chances, but also sometimes the ball's just behind him, so I have a bit of sympathy for him. 
but he needs a goal now I think it's getting a little bit frustrating and it was interesting to see him come off for Ross Barkley I would have actually liked to see Ross Barkley just be the centre forward rather than Willian because Willian works really well on the flanks I think Ross Barkley could have held the ball up a little bit or just be a tank in the middle um, it's kind of an interesting approach didn't really work that substitution oh yeah so Callum hudson Adoy uh, open what 20 minutes of the game he does these when he takes on all these like defenders and dribbles through you're like well this is just a world class kid and no wonder that everyone's looking at him he's an absolute beast in terms of raw ability but I think genuinely there's a problem in Callum hudson Adoy, and when things don't go off for him he fades psychologically like you know ha the hazard will just go again and again and again he tries good things he looked good but when he gets a bit like bodied off the ball or something doesn't come off he sort of fizzles out of games a little bit and for me that's a psychological thing that he needs to fix Kovacic came on was all right didn't have much time to do anything I did actually call when I was on Twitter that when I saw the lineup Willian and Kovac to come off the bench and be a weapon um, that when people don't see stars in a lineup, they critique it. But remember when Conte left Hazard and uh, Costa on the bench against Tottenham in the cup, I think it was semi final, and just brought them off, but brought them both on half an hour to go, and it was just like an elite weapon. In some ways, I kind of saw a similarity here. Have I missed anyone? Uh, I don't think so. So, anyway, kind of a microcosm of Chelsea's season. Loads of missed chances. To be honest, Leicester are a good side. It was a really entertaining game. I mean, the neutral would have loved it for the good football and the missed chances. Chelsea fans will probably appreciate the good football, but just say the missed chances, it's just the same thing. It's the same thing. Sure, maybe, you know, it's just not going to change immediately, but just one of those chances to go in. Anyway, what do you guys think? I'm interested in getting your take on the football match. Um, what do you think the score should have been? Who was the best performers? What was the biggest glaring problems? Get down in the comment section below. Let me know your thoughts and opinions. If you've enjoyed the video today, guys, please do like the video. Why not subscribe if you're new? What did I say like that? Subscribe. Why not subscribe if you're new? Follow me on Twitter and Instagram at FootballYannick. You lot enjoy the football and I will see you later. You ain't so tough with that bad boy tuck I'ma get it how I'm living, I'ma walk the walk Outline my lines, I rap through thought Body bag the verse, outline the chuck In my life seen trouble, hustle on the double Silence on the trigger like my pick got a muzzle Yo chick like to guzzle, bad boy stay in trouble I only love this paper, sorry I don't I laugh me baby